Hello everyone. We are going to start with another lecture of uh, performance management and in this lecture we are going to deal with the concept of life cycle in life cycle costing. Why I am saying that we are going to discuss the concept of life cycle in life cycle costing because both things are different, right? There is a difference, there is a slight difference between the concept of life cycle and life cycle costing. Life cycle means that whenever you start, whenever you introduce a product in the market, it goes through frequent stages, right? Uh, nature of product is different. Uh, nature of the product in the sense if it's a technological product, usually it's said that uh, technological product has a very short life cycle because once you, once you introduce a product in the market, and it can last for one year maybe or one and a half year maybe maximum two years and then after one and a half year maybe one year uh, there will be another product in the market which is going to be a better product because technology is uh, you know uh, in improving day by day but if you are talking about a product which is uh, not uh, not a technological product uh, a very simple product for example you are talking about uh, a petrol driven car then obviously it's it's not uh, I mean changes modifications will be there but uh, life it's very difficult to you know predict the life of of, of that particular thing I mean we we know that uh, there was a, there were desktop PCs that have been invented sometimes back and then there was a invention of then then there was a development towards laptop and then there, there's a development towards tablet and then there is a development towards the convertibles, the tablets. So there are a lot of things which have been uh, through uh, this period. So few products have a very long life cycle. Few products have a short life cycle. Now, why we are concerned with this con with, with this costing concept and why we are concerned with this topic? See, it's very simple. What as a management accountant, I have to recover all costs which are associated with the product from the product right from the life of the product for example there is a company who has manufactured a new mobile suppose you have developed a new product right new product in the sense that you have developed a new mobile phone right so what you will want from that mobile you will want that whatever research and development your whatever expenditure you have made for that mobile you want to recover all those expenditure from this particular set you don't want to recover its uh, research and development costs or advertisement costs or marketing costs from any other product right so uh, that's basically the issue we are very concerned and typically with the with the development of uh, you know uh, there was a time when people manufacture the product and uh, when when companies manufacture the product and they say that look uh, in case this pro there is some problem with the product we are going to repair it right Things have been changed now. If uh, something went wrong with your product, you, are, you people don't repair it; people replace it, and that's the reason why we we are we are you know heading towards a very short life cycle of different products, right? So it's really very important to identify uh, cost of the product and to recover the cost from the relevant customer, right? So that's basically the problem. So uh, let me try to explain this life cycle and life cycle costing concept with uh, this diagram. This diagram is uh, is uh, present in BBP study text. I am just considering this diagram just to explain what is the concept because I think that this is a very good diagram. Um, there is an introduction. There is a research and development. The first phase of product life cycle is research and development, right? Research and development means what? You start research on a new project, right? You start research on a new product. And in case your research gets successful, if you get successful in the research, then you start development of the product. Because sometimes we start research, but we uh, we cannot uh, we cannot prepare a, a, a good product or we or the product or the outcome cannot be capitalized. So, so sometimes we say that, no, uh, this, this, the outcome is not appropriate so we may not continue we may not develop the product but sometimes we develop a good product so in case your research gets successful you start development of the product right so this research and development phase is basically a phase which is uh, before launching the product which is you can say that uh, 
which is the premature phase right premature in the sense that that's before the introduction phase right so that has been shown here research and development has been shown here the development is mentioned here because uh, in case of uh, a successful research you start developing the product right so in in few books you may find research and development uh, together right so development causes here now since uh, this is just a cost phase right there is this is just a cost phase there is no profit or benefit involved here so that's why it says that look uh, this is the profit line and this is the sales line so definitely uh, definitely with the passage of time you are spending more and more money so your expenditure is increasing and since your expenditure is increasing you are making losses in that product not exactly losses you are not recovering anything you are just spending so obviously there is a loss for the company that's why this there is a this line is in the negative phase this line in the negative y axis because you are incurring cost right and then you when after that the complete development of the product what you do you start introducing in in that product into the market you you go for the introduction phase right you introduce product into the market right we call it introduction phase right so introduction phase is what introduction phase is basically a phase where your sales revenue start increasing right but still company is not profitable because your sales has just been started and cost is huge so obviously you were not being able to recover the cost right so introduction phase in introduction phase uh, there are few things which are really very important the first thing is that usually uh, sales volume sales volume at introduction phase is usually low as compared with other stages it's low because we just have started selling the product right usually variable cost per unit and fixed cost per unit tends to high why because uh, we are at the at the at a very uh, initial phase of the product so there is no economies of scale and so variable cost is high and i mean there is no bulk purchasing discount and no learning curve effect i'm mean, learning curve effect in the sense that labor has started the learning phase so still the average cost of labor is high and fixed cost per unit is high because uh, we are at the initial phase of the product and uh, since production quantity is low fixed cost per unit is high right then what about the marketing marketing is very high in the initial phase right marketing expenditure is very high because we really want to introduce our the our product into the market and we want to realize we want to tell customer that look we got this product for you right this product is a quality product and we this got this product got these features so we really want customers to get inspired by our product so that's why we go for a huge marketing expenditure and that is to you know uh, tell the customer uh, that we got this product so that is for the awareness purpose right and what about the distribution cost distribution cost is usually low at the initial phase because sales are low so obviously distribution cost is low right what about the selling price it all depends upon the product if we got a technological product then usually a technological product uh, usually we go for skimming pricing in that phase skimming pricing is basically a pricing policy where company charge high price at the initial phase and then low price at the later phase so in case of a technological product we go for skimming pricing and in case of uh, penetrating price and in case of uh, necessity or in case of uh, of a tough competition competitive market then we usually go for penetrating pricing penetrating is basically once initially we charge customers with a low selling price and then slowly and gradually when customers start accepting our product we increase our selling prices gradually with the passage of time so there can be two options we cannot be so sure about this uh, it depends upon the product right then there is a growth phase now what is the growth phase growth phase is a phase when customer has accepted your product right customer has accepted your product and customer really want to purchase your product so then your product then your sales start increasing right and in growth phase we usually end uh, sales sales are high as compared with introduction phase 
right and variable cost per unit and fixed cost per unit fixed cost per unit start decreasing right and then marketing cost is usually low as compared with the introduction phase because now we have introduced the product in the market so we don't need to spend that much money in, in the marketing expenditure but still we cannot ignore marketing and then company oops i forgot to write one thing here company uh, in the introduction phase company is usually at losses phase right company usually suffer losses grow in growth phase company uh, is company has entered into the profit phase profit phase in the sense that this is basically the growth phase so you see you can this is basically can be termed as a, a point where uh, where uh, where the cost where the cost revenue is higher as compared with the cost of the product so that's why we are we are entering in the into the profitable phase right distribution costs start increasing because the sales are getting higher and higher so obviously there will be more distribution costs right selling price it depends uh if you have try if you have uh, uh decided about the if you have introduced your product by using skimming pricing then you then selling price will be lower a bit lower and if you have started with a skim uh, penetrating pricing policy then you may slightly increase the selling price because your sales are continuously increasing but you cannot make significant change in selling prices because your product is still premature and then there is a maturity phase now what is a maturity phase maturity phase is basically a time period when your product sales when the sales of the product start getting uh slower right and we have seen one thing in the in the previous lectures that there is all uh, that there is a that there is always a threat of new entrant so whenever you come up with a new product in the market whenever you come with a new technology then definite and that technology is successful in case if it's successful then we can expect that there will be some more competitors who will be entering in the market in order to share that profit right that's something which we have already discussed in our fab paper so uh, then there is a maturity phase maturity phase is basically a point where your sales get uh, your growth gets slower right and uh, your market share may be constant but uh, still your sales volume is not increasing by that pace as it was increasing in the growth phase right you can see that in maturity phase the slope is like this and the maturity phase slope is suddenly it's got flattened right so what about maturity phase maturity phase uh, sales volume is usually maximum at maturity phase right variable cost per unit and fixed cost per unit are lowest at this phase right and then marketing cost what about the marketing cost marketing cost uh see uh, we don't need to spend lot of money on marketing cost but still marketing is required students usually uh, uh, usually guess it wrong they say that no there will be no marketing expenditure required for the maturity phase but yes we need marketing expenditure but in this case we need marketing expenditure in order to come in order to uh, you know uh, compete with uh, with the other products right because we know that there are multiple products which are in the market which are similar to our product and you know competitor is trying to grab the profit so we really want to uh, tell the customer that look we are still in the market and you have you can buy products from our company right so marketing is necessary in this case but obviously that will that can be uh, at a lower cost as compared with the previous one now what about the profit company is at maximum profit why maximum profit because this is the profit curve right and profit curve is at the peak at the maturity phase this is at the highest phase at the maturity phase because see your sales volume is maximum and your cost per unit is lowest so irrespective of the selling price your sales vol since your sales volume is at highest phase then definitely your profit is highest at this particular point of time and then there is a then there is a declining phase declining phase depend upon the situation situation in the sense as i said uh 
see it all depends upon your product if uh, if your competitor got if there is an introduction of a new product in case a new a better product has been introduced by someone else in the market then definitely you need to reconsider your product right sometimes our product got enough potential to uh, be in the market for example we know that since we got a good customer base and our product got uh, a good feature but still we can you know uh, we can improve our product a little bit in order to in order to uh, enhance in the the life of the product right so in case uh, in case our product got potential we can invest in the product in order to you know uh, strengthen its uh, life in order to prolong its life but in case our product is uh, doesn't have that much potential then it's uh, then it's uh, useless to spend in that particular part for example if someone says that look we can invest in our desktop pcs in order to uh, to give it more strength then it's useless to spend money on your desktop pcs because desktop pc is an old idea is an obsolete idea no one is going to buy that product right so that thing has been has not been will not be accepted by the customer so in case a better substitute is available in the market then there is a declining phase of company and in this case usually sales volume start declining there is a decrease in sales volume and uh, marketing expenditure usually we stop marketing expenditure but if you are uh, if your company is at a good stage and you see whenever there is a decline of certain things the decline of certain product then usually those companies who are at who are small companies usually stop their businesses first so you may try to grab their customer but obviously it's not a good idea to spend a lot of money on the marketing expenditure typically when your product is at declining phase so what we can do we can start research and development on new product in that case right so this is basically the overall life of life of the product so if you see your book if you see your study text then you can observe that revenue has started from the introduction phase right because once you introduce in the market you can generate revenue but this profit has this loss phase has been started from the time you have started the development phase right so development so till then still a company is bearing cause still companies has not entered into the profit phase then there is a profitable phase and profit got maximized then after the declining phase profit got reduced and somehow it will be zero at some place so obviously you can uh, you can withdraw your product and this is what this is basically an extract from your bbp uh, textbook and i personally believe that it's a good thing to discuss in class because sometimes examiner asks few things which are not very common but is still examiner ask um maximizing the return over the product life cycle right how you can maximize how you can make sure that your product is earning the best possible outcomes right mean uh, there are two to three things which are really very important here uh the first one is a uh, design uh, minimize the time to market the product right once you have developed the product once you are done with the development phase you should try to market it as soon as possible don't take too much time uh, before uh, uh, in order to launch the product because the more time you will take uh, the high, the prolonged period it will be for the break even point i mean you will your break even point will go further because see you have uh, you have made some development work and obviously there has been some cost involved in the development phase there has been some cost involved in the research phase so it's really very it's really good for the company to recover those costs as soon as possible so the sooner you launch the product into the market the sooner you will get uh, the i mean the earlier you will get the benefit from the product right so first of all you have to minimize that time to market number one number two minimize the break even time minimize the break even time in the sense so obviously you have made some expenditures in the market right you have not not in the market you have made some expenditures in the development phase of the product so for example uh, you have made an expenditure of around 1 million in the research and development phase right 
and obviously when you start selling the product you have to recover this 1 million cost from the customer right so as it's it's really very good for the company it's really favorable for the company to recover this cost as soon as possible from the customer why because if this cost take uh, for example you can recover for example if you recover this cost within uh, four to five months of uh, your life uh, of the product or maybe uh, seven or eight months within seven or eight months then it's a it's a good thing but if you recover this cost at i mean 1.5 years or two years then obviously it's not a good idea for to, to do that so as a as a percentage of the overall life of the product you should be able to recover it as soon as possible right so that is basically the concept of minimizing the break even time now this is what this is basically the maximization of the length of times of of lifespan of the product for example you have developed a product you have developed a component you have developed cert, certain thing which you think that can be the can be a revolutionary thing in the market right so you 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 uh, launch that particular product or component in a particular area and then if you really want to improve the performance you can you can either enhance the product or you can launch it somewhere else as well you can you you can uh, try to figure out some other uses of the same component in order to in order to maximize the profit which you can generate from the product right so that means what that means uh, they are set by the actions of management and competitors once developed some product lend themselves to a number of different uses right so if you can identify if you can try to identify your uh, some other market for the product or some other use of your product that would be great for the company and then minimize product uh, pro life uh, pro uh, pro life ration now this is basically what this is basically uh, uh, if product are updated or su uh, suspended too quickly then the life cycle is cut short and the product may just cover its research and development cost before its successor is launched so before i mean for example this is basically a thing that whenever you launch a new product then you should try to uh, then you should try to give him give that product enough space right for example you launch a product suppose you launch a mobile phone right and then after 6 months you launch another version a better version right so obviously your first product has not recovered at 100% cost and then you started an, another product then you launched another product so your product will not get enough time uh, in the market so obviously that product will not be able to recover the cost because you see whenever there is a new product in the market people try to uh, people try to purchase a new product as compared with the previous one right so that's basically the issue now in this diagram this can be a good area to be asked in mcqs or maybe mtq uh, in this diagram examiner has uh, the the study text ha has identified few areas the first area is time uh, uh, time to market the product right so this is basically the development phase right so a is a is actually representing the uh, time from the de from the starting of development till the time where you when you uh, launch the product this is basically this phase let me try to bring to the previous concept that is basically this phase uh, this phase time to launch the product right so this is basically this phase now what's next the next point is the break even time break even time is basically what break even time is is part b part b is from this point to this point right so this shows what this shows the break even from the starting of the development phase you started your development at zero at point zero and then you earn your break even point at this particular point of time where your investment is actually equals to the profit you earn your profit which is actually equals to the investment so that means if initial investment was 1 million and you generated a profit of 1 million from the product then definitely you are done with your and you are done with the recovery phase now whatever profit you will generate after this phase that will be the that will be the extra thing for the company that will be the extra benefit for the company so break even point this is this b is representing the total break even time and c is representing break even time after the product launch so 
this point i mean this shows that how quickly you can you have recovered your break even point the moment you launch the product in the market how quickly you have recovered the cost right so that shows the success factor of the of the product the longer this time period is that means you are taking more time to recover your cost either your profit is low or your investment was very high so that's that's basically the reason behind this this particular point of time this particular phase now return factor is the excess of over profit i mean whatever is uh, whatever you are generating over and above the profit right uh, any any sales after this point where profit is more than the investment that is basically your return phase right so if, if this phase is long if this phase is uh, getting uh, getting over and over above the investment that means company is generating more and more investment from the product right so this is basically the theoretical part of life cycle costing in the next video we will do some calculation part of life cycle costing till then uh, take care of yourself have a nice day allah hafiz